Hey, firstly, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm truly honored that you've discovered my music on YouTube. Like you did the first review on Tangled Hearts and then Beautiful Disguise. So truly, it's it's an honor. So some of the things I wanted to chat with you about, I know you've seen the video, so you probably have a kind of an idea. I wanted to talk a bit about the, your new song, Digital Dreams. So I checked it out. You absolutely crushed it on that song. I really liked it. I was feeling it. So would you kind of consider that to be like a, a retro kind of a disco sound? I, I call it like a, a new era of retro. I say okay. that because like um, I'm not trying to duplicate uh, music that has already been done. Okay. But I take heavy inspiration from the 80s and disco okay. and the 90s as I always have. Like it's it's what drew me to making music to begin with right. even since a very young age. But I say new era of retro because okay. I'm, I'm not trying to mimic a genre. I'm trying right. to reinvent the genre. Interesting. Yeah, what I had written down here that it made me think of because I kind of do sound, songs with a sound like this too. It's like a retro, futuristic kind of sound. Would you kind of say that that would fit? How would you describe it? I think that that would be accurate. Because, okay. you know, I'm trying to always come up with like a more innovative approach to songwriting and not do things that have been done in the past right. or not even do things that are currently being done. So I know that my vocal style for one and my songwriting style like my flow and singing has been questionable at times to some people because i don't think everyone really gets it but i think it's the future of pop right well i think I that's think interesting sort of, yeah yeah i have a feeling that like the future of pop is going to be slightly minimal but with soul again hmm and less the choppy, automated, auto-tune style that we've been having now for like, right. I would say since 2012. That's true, because like you listen to so many songs now, you hear it like the producers now, it's just like a lot of very staccato sounds, like just beeps and boops from a synthesizer. That's interesting, because I could kind of hear that too. It definitely has like more of a, a rounded out sound. That's pretty interesting. There's different, there's different ways that you know, you can sing on top of a melody or right. like in a bar. Like if you think of rap music, mm -hmm. how many words you can put it in one bar. Right. You can kind of do the same with singing. So it could trick the mind into thinking that's maybe off time, but it's because we're now in this sort of space where everything is literally to the grid and there's no right. human approach to the feel of singing that's true. anymore. So I'm trying to like, combine my unique style right. with the future if that makes any sense i'm trying to be that crossroad right. <laughs> do you use any pitch correction or, or i'm not sure if you're the one who mixes or if someone else does that but i'm just curious if you use any of that because i personally stop because i think it sounds better you know for my own singing when it is like because I, I, I said about it, nobody really cares if you're like 40 cents sharp on a note so i don't really use pitch correction do you use that we 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 use it mildly okay. for the aesthetic of pop. Okay. Um, because it captivates still people's attention. Like that's the aesthetic of pop nowadays in music. Okay. Um, but we really did like something different for the last EP, Dancing with Value, that mm -hmm. was including the Tangled Hearts and Beautiful Disguise, where I actually toned down a lot on the pitch correction. Mm -hmm. And it's really leaning more towards the raw sound, and we even use the same um type of reverb okay. that was used in music such as Blondie and Eurythmics to get that wholesome, warm, retro aesthetic okay. in the vocal. So it was very off-putting for a lot of people who are not used <laughs> to that anymore. Sure. I love it. And also, too, I know that you had mentioned in your social media that the Digital Dream song, there were some intentions of it being part of the Dancing Without You EP. So I was just curious, kind of, was there... What went into that decision to kind of release it as its own thing? And is there going to be like another EP spawn off of this sound? So there, there's a few things. Um, so when I wrote the EP Dancing Without You, I was working with my musician friend and producer, Sean Savage from Toronto. And we together produced and recorded all of the music. I wrote all the music. So it had its own kind of element it's it was in its own world because it was mm -hmm. the two of us creating the music now digital dreams 
was my first time experimenting with a producer named Toucan in Arizona. Okay. And it naturally had a completely different vibe because it was a different producer. And so it was also one of the last tracks I wrote at the time. And I feel like I was already in a different headspace. So after listening to like the entire catalog that was supposed to be Dancing Without You, there's actually two songs mm -hmm. that I discluded from Dancing Without You. Okay. A song that's coming up in June and Digital Dreams. I removed those, I pulled it back because it didn't fit. It wasn't in the same universe. I see. Something that was an interesting statement, I know you said in one of your um, things where you were kind of explaining the lyrics of Digital Dreams was you had a comment where you quoted our obsession with the metaverse and that real life is now online. I thought that was a very interesting statement. Could you expand on that a little bit? I mean, it's true, right? Like, look what we're doing right now. It truly is. Yeah. That's why I thought that was so interesting because I never really thought about it how because I think about it for me, like I eat, breathe, and sleep music. So I think even within that, because I was originally a hip hop guy, but I'm kind of transitioning into doing like more pop and R and B. And with hip hop, it used to be like there was the West Coast, the East Coast, the Dirty South, the Midwest. But now, these cultures of where this music is coming from and where the slang is coming from, the style and the fashion, it's not born in the streets anymore. It's born on social media so i just thought that was such an interesting statement that's very relevant now do you think that um it's kind of a relation a relationship to technology kind of the digital dreams what i was listening to it sounded kind of like you were saying like in a positive light kind of is is that how you meant it to be like in a positive light I really wanted to bring like some some joy <laughs> to the plate because okay. when I wrote the song, we were in the middle of uh, the pandemic. So it was September 2020 when I had completed the lyrics and I was just like for the first time I was laid off work. I moved mm -hmm. back home to Montreal because of the situation. And for the first time, I really um, started focusing on my social media presence because previously before covid i was on social media but i wasn't on it religiously because right. it didn't come to my like um how do i say that it didn't it wasn't obvious to me that this is the future like this is the way that independent artists are actually going to be discovered because right. i had the old school mentality i was like grinding and hustling and doing like shows locally in the city of toronto right my boyfriend's a hip-hop artist so mm -hmm. he would put me on some of his shows just so i can get right some stage cool. experience and so we were going about it the old school way i was even still putting posters up in the city like <laughs> i had no clue that things changed so drastically but then when i had the free time and i'm playing around with the internet i'm like Wow, I right. completely was living in my own bubble and I was completely <laughs> oblivious to what the new world is. Right. This is the new world, the metaverse, Web3. <laughs> yeah, I just think that's Web such a cool three. concept because I know like, for a lot of us, and, like for me, I kind of remember this like when that first started becoming a thing because like, when I started doing music seriously, it was probably around... 2010 2011 because that's when i started my youtube channel that became the power is back now there's other people involved it was totally different because it was focused on hip-hop me making beats and that was kind of the beginning of that era because it was like now you have to drop something on a mixtape but I mean, it was kind of different because before that like there was a lot of nightclubs and things around here in buffalo new york where people would do that but a lot of that's changed and during the pandemic I'm not sure if it was different in Canada, but in the States, everything just totally stopped with music for oh, a yeah. while, especially in New York, because the rules are very, very strict here. And so just like a few weeks ago. So it's just very interesting, you know, kind of our acceptance of our digital world that we have now. I just thought that was very interesting. Yeah, so, everything stopped here. Um, it was like, the way I wrote the song too, I was kind of like, being in this headspace where I was just playing around with the situation, making light of the situation, trying to find something positive. Like, 
I really love the lyric I wrote, Send Some Love. Mm-hmm. Because there's so much... The internet could be a cesspool of negativity. Sure. But we could create our own universe in the virtual universe. Right. So if we focus on love and focus on sending each other love, and obviously a play on words like sending, texting love. Right. Um, we could we could make a difference. Yes. That was catchy too, because I think like it's that the chorus is like I, f- I forgot exactly. It's like something send it, send it, receive, send it, you'll receive something like that. <laughs> if you send, you'll receive. If like, you send, you'll receive. What you want them to do to you? Yes, it's awesome. So that one to talk about the other one I reviewed recently was the beautiful disguise, because I said that in the video. There were some questions I had about that. I looked up some of your other video where you kind of explained the lyrics to that as well. Kind of, what was the inspiration for that song? I thought something that was interesting was that I understand you wrote it kind of when you were between like 16 and 19 years old. Kind of what, what was the inspiration for that? Was it like sp- something specific at that time or just your overall experience at that time? Or It was sort of like a project that evolved over time. Um, When I first started writing, like the concept for that, it was actually called Misery. And like, Hmm. I was in between the age of 16 and 19 when I was going back and forth with this poem and melody idea and like song lyrics. And then obviously nothing happened with it. I wasn't even doing music. I wasn't even in a band or anything. It was just for fun with another collection of sad girl songs I've written Um, (laughs) and then I don't know we were just so into making the EP throughout 2020 Um, we recorded crazy we recorded dancing without you Mm -hmm. we did um, the intro track uh, which was another poem I've written a Mm -hmm. few years ago and we we reworked flowers into tangled hearts and then literally the last track I wrote that one actually right after Digital Dreams, now that I think about it. So I need to correct myself from a statement I made previously, but Beautiful Disguise was the last song I wrote for that EP. And the first single we released from the EP, ironically. And I just had this idea, what if I look back at, you know, my old songs. I had this big old hard drive that plugged into the wall. I looked at my Word documents. And then I found it and I'm, I was like, okay, I'm going to rewrite this now that I'm, you know, almost like 10 years older. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> pretty cool. I did. It just evolved naturally into Beautiful Disguise. I took like the old concept of a breakup song being in like an, a relationship with a guy that broke my heart. But then I reinvented it. I was trying to think outside the box. How could I be a little bit more creative? And I took into like... I brought the song into this different space where I was thinking of, I don't know if you know, the anime TV sh- uh, show from the 90s, Sailor Moon, but they mm-hmm. had like this forbidden lover dude, tuxedo mask that all the young girls used to go crazy okay. about. So I took into his persona with my younger melodica experiences mm-hmm. and then a more traumatic experience I experienced in my early 20s with another bad breakup and i just kind of took bits and pieces of Mm -hmm. all my life experience and that concept and just kind of played around almost like um creative writing if that makes any sense yeah and it just happened naturally it it was it was fun wow something too from that because i actually myself did a um mixtape back when i used to rap that was that was the concept of it i went back and um reperform lyrics that I wrote like when I was like 14 or 15 this is a few this is probably going back five or six years because at that point it was a pretty long time ago I wrote those I was like almost I was a um senior in college when I was recording it and my point to that was going back like as a senior in college and rapping lyrics that I wrote when I was 14 and 15 it felt kind of weird because of just how different it was and, I, and not only that but kind of when I was doing that the purpose of it was to make it sound that way so I was trying to purposely perform them as if I was still that age and at that time but just, I'm curious like how much did you change much of the lyrics since then because I know you kind of mentioned that you did like in the writing process but did you change much of the lyrics how you said things and kind of performing it emotionally was any 
challenge to that? Oh, oh big time. It was, it's like, it was a complete change. Like I took bits and pieces of the lyrics and mm-hmm. reconstructed um, my statements and like my phrases and the melody line completely changed. Like if one day I actually get like a demo of the old version versus mm-hmm. the new version, you'd be like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I know another lyric too, just talking about the writing of it. There's the liter the, the lyric, the devil inside of you is the devil inside of me. And I know it's kind of you explain the meaning of that. But I just feel like that's an interesting statement too for a song that's kind of about like relationships and things and that I know I could go a lot of different ways. Like was there any other meanings that like you may have had in mind for that lyric? I was just being completely honest. Mm-hmm with those lyrics and the way i see it it's like we all have a devil in us and sometimes just two good people could bring out the worst in each other and it just is the way it is like for no particular reason it doesn't mean that like i'm bad or they're bad but for some reason there's just something about like our personalities that clash tremendously Mm -hmm. and we just bring the devil out of each other if that makes any sense mm-hmm. and i thought like that was a pretty emotional statement so yes. i thought of like a creative way to express that yeah, that's very cool yeah a lot of the lyrics for that were just so interesting like when i was doing the review i was kind of thinking of that i'm like it's interesting because it's is introspective yet at the same time it's also providing like a social commentary and i just think like that's such an interesting kind of way to write, you know, the kind of introspective and social commentary mixed together. It's almost like giving an inside view of the writer and the performer's view of the world. That just is stuff that fascinates me. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of talking about songwriting a little bit, just kind of some of the things that inspire you. Is there any particular music that you're listening to right now that's interesting? It's pretty random, but I got into recently, like, um, Madonna again. Okay. She was actually never my idol, per se, as a kid, but the older I got, I started to really appreciate her more modern albums. So oh, okay. I'm into, yeah, I'm into this album called Rebel Heart. It was released in 2015. Okay. And there's some solid bangers with great songwriting on it, um, but I was into that recently. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I checked out some of Madonna's newer things too. I thought it was pretty interesting. I think she she does a pretty good job pulling it off too. Like you would not think that someone her age could still like sound pretty slick under vocals, you know? <laughs> I think yeah. it's because she's just always authentic, right? Like when you don't try to be someone you're not mm-hmm. or try to impersonate other people or try to impress people and you just do you, like how can you fail that's very true right yeah i think that's pretty fair to say because yeah like a lot because i'm into a lot of older music as well and a lot of times you listen to like some of these older singers and bands is it's just kind of awkward because like yeah you can tell that they totally haven't listened to anything new and they're just trying to like sing over this newer production but you're right like if madonna i definitely feel like she's someone she's figured out her voice by now and just could like freak what she's doing to go over any type of song (laughs) Yeah. So kind of when you were growing up, kind of what kind of influences did you have? So I'm, I'm sure there's got to be like some type of stuff you heard like in the car with your family and whatnot or like at school that you listened to and it kind of inspired how you do things now. I'm, I'm thinking like right away, Backstreet Boys, Spice Girls, <laughs> awesome. Stephanie's Child, because um, all of that music was just like kind of forced to us, right? It right. was all over the, the radio. But at the same time, like, it was so good. Yes, it really like, was. Just authentic pop. Yes. Remember Hit Clips? Yeah, yeah I, I had Hit Clips. I had the Backstreet Boys and I had Britney Spears. I was wearing them things out. Like, that was my favorite. Sets, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had those. Or do you remember those? Um, I don't know if you had that in the States, but you'd go to, like, the convenience store and buy, like, a candy or lollipop. And then it would have a sticker of NSYNC inside, or Britney Spears, like, so 90s. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I don't think we had those here. At least I, didn't, at least I don't remember seeing them. Yeah. Or there was also, like, um, 
all those Euro pop bands like Aqua. Okay. Uh, Ace of Base, they're called. I think they're called Ace of Base. Sort of one hit mm -hmm. wonders, but really, yeah, Ace of Base. really good pop songs. Yeah. 90s pop was definitely different. Like, I miss a lot of the sounds that they used too, just like all the like hits to bow, 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 bow. <laughs> they need to bring that all back. The yeah, all yeah. the quirky melodies. Yeah. All the we sounds. can bring I'm that like, back. <laughs> I'm trying. I kind of like that. As much as Digital Dreams is, a, is still like a disco mm -hmm. influence and 80s inspired track, I did try and incorporate a lot of like my 90s inspiration. Where oh, I definitely heard that in there. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. you can totally imagine the Spice Girls singing that song, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I like guess definitely. Like, I thought it was kind of, kind of cool about it. Definitely, they did bring that kind of stuff to me. Like, Groove is in the heart, like, the type of songs like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. What is it that's about that type of sound that talking about that, that, that 80s sound that kind of inspires you and drew you toward trying to do that, you know, vocally and whatnot? What, what kind of drew you towards doing that type of sound? Honestly, I think it's just... Um, my comfort zone and i say that because i grew up with my parents who were li like listening to records from mm -hmm. the 70s and 80s right like how can you not be exposed to that music if you're like a millennial like me and sure. your parents grew up in that time so i was right from like a young age listening to michael jackson mm -hmm. 80s madonna depeche mode you yes. like blondie um Queen, late 70s, early 80s, Bon Jovi, Boston, Journey, mm -hmm. uh, Styx is one of my favorite bands too. Um, that whole era with the new wave and experimentation of synthesizers began in the late 70s, right? Kind of right, the way right. the disco started, which way. inspired mm -hmm. the 80s. Right. And so I grew up with that. So I feel like it's just a part of my life. Like it's in my soul naturally. Right. Now run that back. How do you say that? Because we say Depeche Mode. How do you say that? Because because you're from Montreal, so you got more eloquent. How you pronounce it? Depeche Mode. Depeche Mode. So is that that's probably the correct way to say it. That's why I wanted you to say it again. <laughs> so now I know the correct way to say it. So I know that it also said that Digital Dreams was written in one day. Normally, how long does it take you to write music for you personally? It depends. It depends on my mood mm -hmm. my priorities um honestly like it'll happen so often that i just have a brain block mainly because i i'm i'm a perfectionist right and so i get really like aggravated when i don't get something done mm -hmm. uh right away which is my biggest flaw so i i don't have any shame anymore by just like letting it be and getting back to it maybe right. like two weeks or even months later um so it'll sometimes take me a week a couple weeks a few months even one track took a year hmm. it really depends but digital dreams is special the lyrics came uh to me all in one day right. this happened a few years ago too with one of my tracks called uh unaware part two blindside okay. those two tracks i wrote them all in a day wow. i don't know how just inspiration yeah, you know, i understand sometimes, yeah, you sometimes it just comes to you know so like when you're writing your lyrics and you like, prefer storytelling stuff like that that you find that interesting that you go to or that you feel like you use a lot in your lyrics mm, i try not to overthink it in that mm -hmm. way honestly i don't think of my music as an essay mm -hmm. uh i really just like it's so sporadic and spontaneous and random right sometimes i'll have a hook idea first and i'll develop the song around the hook and then i'll tweak the hook or sometimes i'm just jamming right and i start with a verse okay. and then a second verse and then a bridge and then i'm like okay hey, what was this all about bang that's the chorus um i don't i don't have rules with my songwriting because i feel like that takes away the fun right For me, music is meant to be fun yeah um and it's supposed to come from the heart so I, i'm not sure how to answer hmm. that question okay. actually gotcha yeah it's fair yeah because i know with a song the last couple of songs i definitely would say like you it seems like you use a lot of metaphor in there so that's kind of what it seems like intuitively you do so sometimes it's interesting to find sometimes you know like i said it's the hip-hop background i mean hip-hop is basically poetry when you're rapping so a lot of times you, you consider that 
So yeah. with that in mind too, like for you, are you a, do you usually write the lyrics first so that put a melody to the lyrics, or are you one of the people that you kind of have the melody first to write lyrics to it? It's a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Um, I've worked on projects where, because if we want to backtrack a bit, there's some history with melodica. Um, mm-hmm. I used to be with another member of melodica. We used to be two people. We okay. were a duo. Interesting. So the project was uh, the debut project. I was the singer, songwriter, performer, and they were like the electronic music producer okay. and DJ. So we, he had concepts. And it was actually so ironic how it was his idea. We were doing more like urban electro pop style things. Okay. And he would send me demos and I would like reciprocate and ask him like what to incorporate, what to add, let's do this with the drums, let's do that with the synths and the bass. And then at the same time, then I would start writing um, lyrics over top and recording vocal demos and my melodies and harmonies and everything. And then we go back and forth in this way until we were happy with the song. Um, and for many years, it was this way. And then when I went solo with my music, I would approach a producer with my unique demo. Um, and it was actually the other way around. It was just my song, my lyrics, my melodies, uh, the key mm-hmm. I'm in. and. I look up quickly some like chords that go with the song because I'm not like too good at music theory. Mm-hmm. And so then we would produce around this. And then of course, some lyrics and melodies change and chorus changes, but there's no like set way. I just go with the flow. Right. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to do it. You know, just let it come out, you know, because yeah, it, that's always an interesting question too because it definitely affects like how you actually sing it as well i would say for you too kind of with the vocal performance were you like did you have any kind of formal training or anything like that just out of curiosity i did singing lessons once when i was 11. Okay. um but i've i had a lot of stage fright and i didn't ever think i'd actually pursue music so singing was sort of like a hobby so right to answer your question, honestly, no, I've never had formal training. Um, before COVID, however, when I was getting more serious with mm-hmm. releasing music and making music and I started performing live for the first time, I have been seeing um, vocal coaches. Okay, And I do some coaching here and there online now. Um, so it's sort of like... I'm trying to catch up now because I discovered recently that I have asthma. So okay. I need to learn breathing techniques when doing live. Because in the studio, I'm very comfortable, but performing live is very difficult for me currently, but okay. I'm working on it. That makes sense. That's interesting. And performing live, like my first times that I've ever tried to like seeing live, they didn't go too well because it's like, I would, I would either freeze up or I would just like be singing so quiet and like mumbling. <laughs> So I feel you on that. It takes time. (laughs) And then there was a period when I was learning that I was doing way too much and it would be ridiculous. Like, it's like a video that's still on YouTube from 2016, but we performed at a jazz festival and like, I was like that. (laughs) But at least you're doing it. Like you don't know like what your flaws are and where you make mistakes if you don't try different things, right? True. So at least you did it. Right. Most people would be so too scared to do it, and you did it. That's a quote too that I love that I heard from someone that I stole. A lot of people might tell me that I can't sing, but at least they can't tell me I didn't sing. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of like when you're singing too, like, do you really put much thought into kind of like the way that you voice things in terms of like if you're gonna sing it in a higher tone or in a lower tone, or if you're gonna be louder? Kind of is there anything creatively that you really um, do with that? For the most part, I just like to follow my intuition okay. and and sometimes that works to my disadvantage because with the idea of of like wanting to just like create a good song and mm-hmm. not taking into account that it's very possible that I'm not even actually capable of physically reaching those notes, mm-hmm. that happens to me. So I get really screwed in the studio, like really screwed, but I do it. Just like what we said before, you know, we can <laughs> I can <it>. relate. Because <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know what it is. I 
I feel like in a perfect world, I would love to be a songwriter for others who have an amazing voice. Like sure. if I could write songs for Mariah Carey and Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga, that would work out for me because then I don't have to worry about having to hit those notes. Right. <laughs> um, because when I song write, it's more, it's not even about me, it's about the song. Like, what right. will make this song the greatest it could be? And then, um, like, now I ask Um, like in Crazy and Dancing Without You, mm -hmm. a very difficult chorus. Um, very, very difficult. So I have to tweak that when it's my live versions. Sure. I sing it in a different key. Okay. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Now, too, what about like rapping? Because I know I, I've heard like, which was the song that they because you had kind of like a rapping part of one of the songs. I'm trying to remember. I think it might have been Tangled Hearts. Kind of like, yeah. do you do much rapping? I mean, I've been I grew up listening to like hip hop. Mm -hmm. uh, my boyfriend's a rapper, uh, so I think it was natural that in a lot of like the music I started writing, I do like a lot of I call it my breakdowns. A lot of the times in my bridges, I'll do like a rap thing. Okay. Uh, in one of my earlier tracks, Don't Believe You Speak, I have this sort of more R&B rap style in the bridge. Tangled Hearts has a rap inspired bridge. Uh, even just that whole song in general, it's very fast, a lot of words, right. fast paced and bars, almost like rap. And a song that's coming up in June, I'm pretty much rapping the, the bridge. So I, hmm. it just happened. It's just <laughs> a cool, transition like what can i do to throw someone off in this song right. where they, they think we're going this direction but then i surprise them with something all right is that, i like that so it's got to switch it up <laughs> yeah like we gotta switch it up you know exactly you have only two and a half minutes nowadays to impress them do that like switch it up. <laughs> yeah like sometimes songs aren't good that long <laughs> yeah yeah like in our music now it's like about that one bar moment too <laughs> That's it. That like 15 seconds to put on TikTok. <laughs> That's it. But so, I, I don't write songs for TikTok. Like, mm -hmm. As much as now we have to take into consideration uh, how, you know, influential this platform is. Mm -hmm. I can't just decide, okay, today I'm going to write a song to make a TikTok hit. Right. Like, to me, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm not like that. Yeah, I understand. Kind of speaking of that, too, with, like, videos and whatnot, I noticed, like, in the Tangle Hearts video and even, like, Digital Dream and some of the others, there's a lot of interesting influence I see for, like, cartoons. Like, I remember Tangle Hearts, as I said during the review, like, it's interesting. I was pointing out, like, I was like, this cartoon network stuff going on. It's like uh, the Powerpuff Girls are in there. You know, like, so, so where, where did that come from? Are you like a big cartoon fan yourself? I was a big cartoon fan yeah. as a kid. Um, I used to love playing, like, on these, like, uh, cartoon doll websites mm -hmm. as a kid. Uh, I used to draw a lot, too, as a kid and paint. So I used to draw my own cartoons and dolls. Um, but what... One thing I always wanted to do, I I really wanted to have my own universe with my music, sort of like, mm -hmm. you know, the gorillas? Yes. But their whole brand yes. is based on the cartoon. Right. But I wanted to make an alternate universe, like a melodica within a melodica. Right. So you have That's me. That's kind of cool. You got like the MCU for your music. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, I came across this um artist from france her her elias is toaster mine that's her mm -hmm. cartoon name and when i saw her drawings on instagram i was like this is it this is her so we started working together and she's been custom making all my tunes yeah, and we cool. had comic strips that came out with the ep last year so oh, for every cool. song yeah for every song i wrote comic strips along with like the visuals for Beautiful Disguise, Crazy, mm -hmm. um, Dancing Without You, and then that led up to the introduction of the first animated video, Tangled mm -hmm. Hearts, and now Digital Dreams, I'm combining the real world. I'm combining Melodica with the Melodica within a Melodica world. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Was your favorite yeah. cartoon growing up? 
Oh, Sailor Moon. Sailor Power Moon Puff was Girl. your favorite. Powerpuff Girls. Girl. Hey Arnold. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> you know? Awesome. So the other thing that I love, I love the fashion that you have in there. Cause I always like that when you kind of get like, what's the collegiate art student like me where intermodal, meaning like you take different mediums of art. I love how you kind of combine all that with the, the music, the visual, and then the fashion too. Kind of what's the influence from the fashion? Like, is there some regional influence there? Is there anything that? I think it, it it's just me. Um, and it's funny because now I'm, I like at home, I look like this. <laughs> but when I go out, I ha I've always had a more eccentric style. I, I used to get picked on in high school for for dressing weird, having like an out there fashion sense. And I just I love I love style. I like putting pieces of clothes together. I mm -hmm. used to costume design a lot too. Oh, cool. Like leading up to Halloween, I used to love costume designing. Um, a lot of my outfits in my music video, I styled and designed a little combination of both. And I mean, this is gonna sound so hipster, but I mean, I am a hipster at heart. I <laughs> love thrift shopping and going to like like retro uh, aesthetic fashion shops. I, I've been doing that since I was 16 years old. Wow, that's pretty neat. Kind of like in your local music scene, I was just kind of curious too, cause you know, I've never been to Montreal. I guess first let me ask you that. Cause I know you said Montreal and Toronto. I know a little bit about Toronto, but just a little bit because it, it is the thing musicians from Buffalo drive over the bridge and drive up to Toronto often. But I don't know much about Montreal. Could you, could you maybe tell us a bit about what's Montreal like and kind of how is it made up? <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's a smaller city. It feels like you're in a small town. Everyone here knows everyone. Um, the buildings are not as tall as Toronto mm -hmm. or New York City. Um, it's a bit more humble, more petite, kind of Euro style. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of like the areas in Montreal will look like identical to Europe. Okay, yeah, I was about to ask and that too, because I've heard that from a lot of our stateside, our perspective that I've heard that been there is like, feels like you're in Europe. Yeah, there's a lot of artists here. Um, but in recent times, what's been happening is a lot of the artists will want to take their their pursuit to the next level. Mm -hmm. They they move out of Montreal just because of like the problems with like um, job opportunities. Okay. Um, that's an overall problem in Canada, to be honest. Oh wow, I but, didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's really hard to break through in Canada. The scene here is it's very small, but like next level competitive. Oh, wow. um, so it, it's very difficult but the people in Montreal and Toronto too very nice very nice um like I said Montreal to me feels like a small town everyone en ends up knowing everyone and so That's nothing more neat. to say is it pretty supportive like as far as the music scene like do other musicians like Melodica and, and, and you know check out your stuff <laughs> Um, I've been having a hard time fitting in with my music, if I could be completely uh, honest. I understand. Man, sometimes that's kind of the tough part. What, like, what's popular there, like, in terms of what's the most bands? Like, around here, it's all, like, we, we joke about it, it's kind of mean, but it's the truth. It's, like, old guys that are playing, like, rock music from 60 years ago. <laughs> How's it, like, in there, like, in Montreal? Honestly, it's the same. You have a lot of, uh tribute style bands right um and then like a lot of the indie rock bands like that whole indie style right um and hip-hop is massive uh, okay especially you know drake is our biggest guy here right and the weekend and so hip-hop and r&b too is growing right so i would say for someone like me that does electro pop uh, it's like not as popular. It's like no. Hmm. A lot of my listeners are mainly from like Europe or even oh, wow. the USA. Yeah, that's interesting. So. Yeah, that was definitely an interesting question I wanted to ask. Kind of. So I know sometimes it's kind of tough to admit that, but yeah, it is interesting to think like how your music is received in your local scene. But like you said, it's it's nice that we have 
the internet and platforms where we can branch out and you know people from outside of our local scene can be exposed as well yeah i feel like that that's just what i've been focusing on for for many years like what like four years i've been focusing on trying to like break break in the local scene and trying right. to like network with other artists but the interest was never mutual there was no reciprocation mm -hmm. so it's sad to say but i give up trying to be labeled as a canadian electro pop artist i mean they're not interested in me and that's okay mm -hmm. so i'm gonna go on the internet and look you know forward to communicating with people who are interested in what i do and focus on that exactly so i'm gonna go ahead and the closing question all this has been great like i i'm enjoying this again to learn so much about you and like just canada you know like here's a here's a quick one this is just <laughs> this is silly but it's it's ketchup chips is a thing in canada right ketchup yeah Ke ketchup chips ketchup what, chips yeah we have that yeah because i remember that i remember but actually we had those here i remember as a kid there was a corner store that's on bailey avenue People that's from Buffalo know where that is. It's kind of in the hood a little bit because that's what I was located. I lived over there. And I remember that. Like, they had, like, stuff that, like, now I'm learning it was, like, Canadian snacks. And it was, like, so cool. <laughs> we have ketchup awesome. chips. We have pickle chips. We even have, like, Dijon mustard chips, you know. That's we awesome. Got it all. And poutine <laughs> or poutine, as I learned, I, I think it's the Canadian way to say it. Yeah, poutine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. So we'll close it out and I'll stop rambling. <laughs> so this is the closing questions that I'll say. So just as a whole, as a holistic experience, how would you describe Melodica to others? Mm, melodica is your, now I'm on the spot. This is hard, <laughs> it's always hard. So I want to keep it short and sweet. But at the end of the day, if you're just like, wanting to feel good and escape your daily problems or insecurities or emotional things that you're going through i just really want my music to be there as a friend for others like you can escape with me i, I just want to provide escapism and inspiration and that's all that's my job and if i've done that like i can die happy five years from now where's melanica <laughs> no no we're gonna manifest this so Five years from now, um, Digital Dreams became like this huge radio hit. Yes. And now I'm touring um, at least North America. And yeah, I played at the Bell Center for the first time. Awesome. <laughs> With all my cartoons projected in the background. And everyone, <laughs> That's awesome. You know, my choreographers are all like in their costumes looking like my cartoons. And that's, <laughs> that's the vibe. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. And I can't wait to see it. Well, I'm going to close this out. Thank you so much for taking the time out to have this chat with me. And to everybody that's going to be watching this video, I got to do my outro. So, to Melodica, to all you watching at home, love what you do. I enjoyed this chat with Melodica, and I hope that all of you did too. And I spread nothing but peace and love to all of you, and I will see you in the next review.